We see so-called lie detector tests all the time in popular culture, on talk shows, and in law enforcement, and they're generally depicted as being a source of objective truth, scientific and accurate. During your relationship with Latasha, have you slept with another woman? You said no. The lie detector determined that was a lie. Do you know anyone in the Illuminati? No. Are you in the Illuminati? No. Did you physically cause Shanann's disappearance? No. But from the perspective of this neurologist, these tests are utter pseudoscientific nonsense, complete nonsense. And today, I'm going to go over the theoretical basis of a lie detector test and explain why scientific evidence completely refutes their efficacy. And that doesn't just go for the polygraph, but also the new functional MRI, so-called lie detector test. And I'll explain why there will likely never be a truly objective way to determine whether someone is lying or telling the truth. Let's have some fun. So let's start with the traditional polygraph. Now this turns out to be a huge industry. It's used in law enforcement, federal agencies like the FBI, NSA, CIA. They do pre-employment lie detector tests. It's used by local police departments and it's a billion dollar industry and there are many training programs for polygraphers and many journal articles published about them. Basically a polygraph, which just means many graphs, measures four different things. One is blood pressure and actually it's not the blood pressure but rather fluctuations in blood pressure because they inflate the blood pressure cuff and just keep it inflated during the entire test. They measure pulse or heart rate and the rate of respirations along with electrical skin conductivity. And the background here is that when you're hooked up to a machine and you're being asked a critical question and you're lying, you're very likely to become nervous. And while you're nervous, there's an activation of the sympathetic nervous system which changes these physiologic measures such as your blood pressure which is increased, your pulse rate is increased, increase and you may have changes in respiration such as a temporary pause in respirations or an increase in the length of the expiratory phase or other changes and there's sort of a whole pseudoscience behind how to interpret a polygraph and you're likely to sweat more when you're nervous and the salt and water in your sweat increases the electrical conductivity of your skin measured by electrodes now right away you can see that the premise is bogus here although the polygraph may measure nervousness in a sense nervous is not exactly lying. You could be nervous for various reasons. In fact, I would be extraordinarily nervous if I were measured by a polygraph, even if I were telling the truth, because I know how likely it is to falsely accuse you of lying. And even the temperature in the room and the way the polygrapher is asking the questions could influence the test results very dramatic. And as you'll see, the scientific evidence suggests that it's not very accurate. Now, there are many ways a polygraph can be performed, but generally the examiner will interview the subject in in general to establish a baseline of the polygraph and to generate critical questions which will determine whether you pass or fail, then they'll often try to convince you that the polygraph is effective in detecting lies. For instance, they may do what's known as a stim test where they'll ask you to lie intentionally and then show you some changes on the polygraph and try to convince you that it is in fact effective even though it's not. And this does two things. One is encourage you to confess voluntarily and also make you more nervous if you intend to lie and that will cause you to generate a greater reaction when lying and make it easier to detect the lie. Now there are things they can test, uh, many things. One is the control question test where they'll compare the answer to the critical question to control questions or the background on the polygraph. For instance, they'll ask, are you in Colorado, for example? Are you married to Susan? And you'll answer truthfully and that will be a background and they may also try to get you to sort of intentionally lie or lie on a question that's not the critical question. For instance, have you ever cheated in, in school, for instance? And then they'll ask the critical questions. For instance, are you involved in the disappearance of Mary or did you rob that bank? And then they'll see your reaction and compare it to the control questions. And that's known as the control question test. There are other things they can look at. For example, one is the guilty knowledge test. For instance, let's say a knife is involved in a crime. They could show you a candlestick and say, have you ever held this candlestick and see your reaction and then say, have you ever held this knife and see your reaction? And generally speaking, if your reaction to the critical question is more severe than your reaction to the control question, you'll have failed the polygraph. Now, despite the popularity of lie detector tests in popular culture, there are many critiques that have gone on 
for decades. For one thing, as I'll show in the scientific literature, they're not very accurate at all. In fact, they're quite biased against the innocent. Although they may catch many liars, there are many people who are not lying who are falsely accused of lying. There are examples of people who are accused of crimes based on failing lie detector tests, even though they were actually innocent. Also, the test is susceptible to what are known as countermeasures or intentional efforts to beat the test. For example, you could try to increase your reaction to the control questions. For instance, you might bite your tongue or curl your toes tightly in order to increase your heart rate. You may intentionally pause your breathing in response to a control question so that your reaction to the critical question does not seem as severe in comparison. Also, it's true that some people confess voluntarily when subjected to the lie detector test but some of these confessions are false, and the false confession phenomenon, although unusual, is known to occur when someone is bullied into a confession, especially when they're pressured after being told that they failed a lie detector test. And as a result, there are many laws against the polygraph. For instance, polygraphic evidence is completely inadmissible in court, either presented by the defense or the prosecution, because it's simply not scientifically valid and could bias the judge or jury. Also, private employers are not allowed to use polygraphs either for their current or prospective employees because of the potential for abuse. And of course, there are exceptions for law enforcement and government agencies like the NSA and FBI. So I'll show a little bit of the research on polygraphs. This is a meta-analysis of 34 different studies totaling 3,099 polygraph exams, and this was under ideal circumstances with experienced examiners, but naive examinees untrained in countermeasures who had absolutely no incentive to beat the test. And yet the median accuracy was a pathetic 86%. I mean, geez, you might as well just shine a light in people's eyes and stare at them and see if they sweat. Uh, and you can see the sensitivity of these studies is all over the place. This is the probability of correctly identifying someone who's lying, and it ranged between 55 and 95 percent. But the false positive rate ranged between 35 percent, excuse me, 65 percent false positive, and uh, 100 percent accurate, 0 percent false positive. And you can see the typical study was about 80 percent sensitive and 80 percent specific, which is not very good. Definitely worse than looking at any other form of of evidence. Now there was a small meta-analysis of seven studies using law enforcement and they repeated they reported a mean accuracy of 89% which is a little bit better but of course you have to compare to some kind of gold standard and they used a confession as a gold standard for guilt which is not 100% accurate and other forms of evidence like an ultimate conviction which again is not 100% accurate and you can see that although the test was very sensitive in most cases there was a real Really high false positive rate. Look at 60 to 70 percent of people falsely accused of crimes. That's simply unacceptable. It's just too biased against the innocent. And there are many famous examples of people who beat the lie detector test, such as the Cuban spy Anna Montes, who worked for the Department of Defense for a long time, along with Gary Ridgway, the Green River Killer, and Aldrich Ames, who worked for the CIA but was actually a Russian mole. All of these people beat lie detector tests in the case of the agents many, many times. Okay, sweating, heart rate, these things aren't exactly equivalent to lying, but maybe we can just bypass all of that and directly image the brain with a functional MRI machine and see which areas of the brain are activated when the person asks the critical question. And surely that will tell us who's lying and who's telling the truth. You can't suppress your own thoughts, right? And the popular media seems to have picked up on this idea and they are promoting fMRI lie detection just like old timers used to promote polygraphy. And this is an example from a published article on fMRI lie detection where the examinees were asked to think of a number between three, four, five, six, seven, and eight and they were asked is your number three is your number four and they were asked to answer no and the fMRI scan was done each time so for instance is the number three the person answers no and this is the fMRI now this particular person you can see when they answered no to is your number seven all of these areas of the brain lit up and this person was in fact lying because seven was the number they selected however I read the entire article and the authors were 
cherry picking here. The overall data is not very impressive. So let's look at overall fMRI data comparing lying to truth. So for example, this study showed that lying was linked to patchy gerrymandered regions in the supermarginal gyrus, middle temporal gyrus, middle frontal gyrus, superior frontal gyrus, inferior frontal gyrus, dorsal medial prefrontal cortex, caudate, and thalamus. What? On the other hand, this study found that deception was linked to activation of clusters in the anterior cingulate cortex, bilateral, inferior frontal cortex, inferior parietal, and medial temporal gyri, and the precuneus. <laughs> <laughs> okay, let me help these researchers out. There simply is no unique neurological area in the brain related to lying. There's no neurological injury or disease that specifically impairs the ability to lie. Lying is a complicated phenomenon. Just like an fMRI scan cannot tell you that you like the color green or pineapple pizza or you prefer brunettes, it cannot tell you accurately if someone is lying. That person who is lying about the number seven, perhaps they got nervous, they were thinking about a lot of different things lighting up random areas of the brain unrelated to lying that simply is not going to happen so consistently particularly if someone has an incentive to not get caught. And indeed, the scientific evidence supports the idea that fMRI lie detector tests are ineffective, although one study suggested that it's perhaps a little bit better than the polygraph, maybe 24% more effective. Many studies show that it's not very good. For instance, this is a study on mock crimes. People were advised to intentionally commit a fake crime where they stole a ring or some other object. And the fMRI was effective at detecting not nine out of nine liars, so 100% sensitivity, but only five out of 15 people were correctly identified as innocent. In other words, 10 out of 15 were falsely accused of committing the crime. 33% specificity, ridiculous, completely worthless test. In every case, the other facts about the crime are going to be much more accurate than this ridiculous fMRI lie detector test. The only way to achieve any reasonable sensitivity is to make the specificity way too low. That's simply unacceptable, simply biased against the innocent. If you want to do a little research for yourself, I'll include some sources below. And of course, you could argue that from the perspective of police departments or the NSA or the CIA, they don't really care if lie detector tests work or not as long as they can bully people into confessing. But I'd be interested to know your thoughts, please post in the comments below, particularly if you've ever taken a lie detector test. I'd love to know what that experience was like or if you have any suggestions for future videos.